Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Jim with Doesn't Pay Full Price, and if you watched my last couple videos while I was in New Mexico, there's one ingredient that I came across by far more than anything else, and that was chilies. Whether it was red chili on an enchilada or green chilies on a burger, chilies were in almost everything, and I'm gonna show you how you can roast and store your own chilies at home. The best thing is, this doesn't just work with New Mexico chilies. This is good with Anaheim's, Poblanos, Jalapenos, bell pepper, anything you want. And as a little bonus, I'm gonna show you how to make your own chili powder at home both using a food dehydrator and not using a food dehydrator. So don't even think about going anywhere. To get started, go ahead and procure yourself a plethora of perfectly picked peppers. These ones in particular happen to be personally picked by me in Albuquerque, and I have a combination of both red and green chilies, and I'm gonna show you what to do with all of them. Although technically a toaster will work, we're gonna opt for a much better way, which is using a baking sheet and one of these cooking racks to keep all the peppers up off of the bottom. Put all of your peppers on the cooking rack, making sure to leave a little space in between for even heat distribution. Then preheat your broiler as high as it'll go, minus 500 degrees. I used mostly green chilies, saving some of these red chilies for chili powder. Put your chilies into the oven, getting them as close to the heating elements as possible for maximum char. After five minutes, take your peppers out, Rotate them around. We want even char all the way around. So put them back in for another five minutes. And then every five minutes, take them out, rotate them. After about 15 minutes, you should have some well blistered peppers. And you could use a mixing bowl, Tupperware, anything that you can seal airtight. We're gonna throw all of our peppers in, cover it with plastic wrap, and then we're gonna give them a good steam for 15 minutes. After that 15 minutes is up, go ahead and remove your plastic wrap and we start the painstaking process of peeling every single pepper. There should be a very definitive outer layer of skin that you wanna peel off and make sure not to do it under running water because you'll rinse off all that good roasty flavor. Scrape out all of the seeds from the inside of the pepper. Store these whole if you like. I like to chop them up nice and fine so they're ready to just throw on a cheese burger or into some pork green chili. I like to use vacuum seal bags. I'll make two or three individual portions and just keep them in the freezer, take them out as I need them. But if you wanted to keep them fresh, you can keep them in the fridge for up to a week or these store just fine in Tupperware or any kind of Ziploc bag. Just take whatever air out you can, throw them in the freezer and you've got roasted chilies anytime you need them. If you have a food dehydrator, go ahead and get it out. We're gonna start making chili powder. So to do this, we're gonna take all of our reserved peppers, cut them lengthwise, and then take out the membrane and the seeds. You can certainly leave them in if you want to, you do you. I like to flatten these out as much as possible and then cut them into one inch pieces. The more surface area helps them dry out faster. I tried this with longer pieces, it just takes way too long. So lay out all your pieces on your dehydrator sheet, set it to 140 degrees for 10 to 12 hours, and then to make sure you don't pepper gas yourself, Set this outside at night. I learned this the hard way, but trust me. If you don't have a dehydrator like this one, that's totally fine. You can just set your oven as low as it'll go, typically around 150 degrees. Crack the door open a little bit so moisture can escape. Just lay all of your peppers out on a sheet pan, put them in there. Depending on the thickness of your peppers, check after an hour and then every hour after that. As soon as they're dry, take them out. It should only take about two to three hours or so. When your peppers are all dried out, they should look something like this and be nice and dry and crumbly and not have a lot of moisture. They should snap. And now we're ready to grind these up. Go grab your favorite coffee grinder and then what you're gonna wanna do is break these up into pieces small enough so they fit in your coffee grinder. We're just gonna grind this up until it's a nice fine powder. Put it into your preferred choice of container. Your fresh homemade chili powder is gonna stay fresh for months. Also, make sure to clean this out really well before you use it for coffee or your wife is gonna be very mad. I'm telling you right now, any spice that you make at home is gonna have so much more flavor than what you buy in the grocery store because it hasn't been sitting in a distribution center or on shelves for months at a time. If you ever get the chance, it's definitely worth giving it a try. I'm also gonna have some really good recipes on what to do with these green chilies coming up here pretty soon. So make sure to subscribe, also hit the like button, and we'll see you next week.